let's take a look at the sketches for today. We've got two buttons, they are grayed out, and then we have a text link. So these are gonna be things that we're working with. We also wanna make sure that we are taking care of text links that are in the middle of content, like a paragraph of text, and also text links that are outside of the content, but still kind of separated, but we still don't want them to be a button. This is typically where you see those bad links that are learn more. So if you want to know why that's a bad idea, then check out this video. And then we'll also, of course, have to deal with the two different types of buttons, which is buttons that are actual buttons, like this one in the middle, and that's a button element, so the, so the tag is actually a button. And then the one on the left is a link, but it's supposed to be styled like a button because usually in modern web design, all of our links that are really important are usually styled as if they are buttons, even if they're technically taking you to a different page which would be what a link does. Whereas a button is more for interactive stuff. So like if we had a calculator, you'd click the one button to, to choose the number one. And let's start getting these to look uh, a little bit more cohesive. So I'm gonna pop over to the code. The first thing is that the pointer actually needs to be added to our button element. And that's because if you were able to see my cursor in this screen, it would look just like my typical arrow pointer, but it doesn't indicate to me that it's clickable. And so we're gonna actually add that so that it's that little hand cursor. And so that's a little little bit of a, a given that we just have for us to, to always make sure that's on there um, so that we don't confuse our, our users, especially our sighted, sighted users. And the other thing is we, we wanna get this button element to start looking a little bit more like our link because right now it has its own styles. It comes with styles like a background color, a border, and even some font stuff. So we're gonna do a little bit of a reset here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of that border. We're just gonna do border zero. And then we're also gonna change the background color. And let's just do a light gray. And we're gonna see what happens. There we go. So now you can see the button has actually changed pretty dramatically compared to what it was. Our link button is still basically the same. It's just some text, but now it has the, the background color on it. But you'll notice there's something kind of weird and that's that the button actually has some padding on the left and right sides. It's also smaller in font size and technically the font family is different as well. So we wanna change that and make sure that they're cohesive and following our directions uh, rather than the styles that, that kind of come preloaded with the browser. So what I'm gonna do is font family. This is gonna be a reset. So I'm just gonna say inherit. I want it to, to grab whatever is uh, outside of itself. So like if there's a font family that's defined on the body, it will snag that instead. And then also the font size. I also want this to be inherited. Now the, the text is correct and matching the link button, but we still have a little bit of padding that is a little bit off. But we also wanna fix the padding on our link button because it's very much like smashed up against the link text and that is not great for readability. So let's pop over the code and we're gonna add some padding here. I'm gonna do a 0.5 rem. So we're gonna do a little bit shorter on top and bottom and then a little bit more one rem on the left and the right. So I'm gonna hit save and let's go see what that looks like. We refresh, now it's kind of taking that shape of like what a button usually is or what we typically see. The only other difference is that our colors and the, the underline in the text is a little bit weird. So we do wanna get rid of that and we'll just do that simply by doing text decoration, none. And also we're just gonna inherit our colors just like we did with the font family and the font size. We just want it to inherit whatever the color is so that it just kind of soaks up the context and it gets a little bit more cohesive. So now you can see it's no longer purple, it's no longer underlined, and they both look the same. So that's great. The other thing we want to do is take care of a border radius because that's very common to have on a button is a border radius. And I actually have a little custom property up here just to make it a little bit easier to kind of configure this. And that way things are going to be pretty consistent without us having to define these over and over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, a CSS variable right here that says, hey, grab this value, which is 10 pixels, and use that as my button radius. And the reason why, because then I can quickly just 
edit any of these little things. If I need to tweak something, I can easily do that right up here instead of having to dig through the code. So that makes it a, a little bit more extensible, a little bit more robust as far as like getting into a design system. And then what we can do is we can go back here. We can say, hey, look, we've got our, our rounded corners. Maybe that's a little bit too much. So I'm gonna go back up here. We're just gonna say five go back to our screen and refresh. And now it's a little bit a little bit softer. So that's kind of a nice little trick. So now we can see we do need to, to style our text anchor links and the text link that's outside of text. We're gonna go up to our A tag and this is gonna be in your kind of default styles, your, your base styles. We're gonna set a color, color orange. This is gonna be my, my primary color, if you will. So this is the one that I want to be actionable. This color means that when I see it on the site, I'm clicking on it. That's usually what a primary color is, is the action color. And uh, for the focus, I want it to be able to uh, change color as we you know, hover over it or if it's focused on the keyboard. We'll just change it to black for now. Now we can see we've got our, our text link. This is great. If we hover over it, it turns black. Same with this one down here. That's awesome. Always make sure that you've checked your contrast ratio for accessibility because we don't want this orange to be unreadable by people with low vision. So make sure that that's checked. And if you need help with that, check out this video over here. A lot of times this text decoration, this underline is really pretty ugly. And, and it's actually only ugly because of the way that its default is. And that's because it's right up against the baseline of the text and it's very uncomfortable. It doesn't look that great. So a lot of designers tend to just say, we'll get rid of it because they think that that's how it has to be if it's underlined. But there is a little bit of a trick and it's a, a property that I don't see used very often at all. It's called the text underline offset. And I'm gonna set it to just three pixels. That's not very much, but it makes a huge difference. So if we go back here and refresh, you're gonna see it. Suddenly that line moves down. It gives that text some breathing room. It works so much nicer and it doesn't interrupt the text as much as it does when it's right up against there. It doesn't make it quite so hard to read. And the cool thing about this is that a lot of times for accessibility reasons, we want to have something more than just color to indicate that there is a link in in the text somewhere that you can you can highlight over and click on. Sometimes people still, even with good contrast, they're not able to to totally pick out, you know, where that link is. Maybe they they don't notice, or maybe the the color is too it could be like a purple like we kind of saw before with the default styles and it kind of blends in with the rest of the text. So if there is a way to do something more than just color to indicate that it's a link, text decoration is great to have on and I would suggest using this text underline offset to give it some breathing room, make it visually much nicer to deal with. The one thing that I will say is you do want to watch out for your line height and this should be something that is taken into consideration anyway. That might be a little bit tight. This might be a little bit of a tight line height anyway. So if we just add in our, we'll just say this is our typography system, right? Just add in just a little bit more line height. That really makes it much more readable. The link really stands out. It's easy to, to click on, very attractive. So that's one way to deal with your text links so that they are still not buttons, but they work seamlessly in text and they're not quite so hard to read. All right, so now it's time to tackle the theming of the button. So the, the colors, the active and the hover state. Right now we don't have anything and our stuff is just kind of gray. So let's go over to our code. We're gonna create a button primary class. And this is gonna be where we put all of our information for colors. So I'm gonna start off with a background color. We're gonna use that same color orange for our, this is gonna be our primary action color. And so I'm gonna change the background color there. And also I want the, the same kind of feel that we did with the text links. We're going to just change the background color to that black color. And since we're doing that on hover, we're also going to have to change the text color to kind of a white slash gray. And so that's going to be our color theme. We are going to need to add this now to our HTML. So I'm going to go button dash primary. And then finally, let's go ahead and add it to our button element and we're going to do button primary hit save go over to chrome and refresh 
and you can see there is an issue here. So we are getting the hover state on the, the button button. Our link button is getting the hover state, but it is not getting that orange color that we were expecting. And so if we go back over to the code, I wanted to show you this because this was a little bit of a thinking error that I had. And right here you can see this is actually the problem is that this adds just a little bit more specificity. And so it's overriding our theme, which is down here, that with this, and that's why we're seeing it. So if I actually got rid of this, we should see it matching now. That also means that if we ever have some button that maybe just doesn't have a theme like this, if we get rid of our class here, then it goes back to it's a slightly different gray than what we had defined. And so it would be off brand. So I actually think it's okay to do this, to have a, a default button color that maybe is just like, hey, if we, if we don't have a, a theme on it, it's going to be like this. I would get rid of the A. And that also leads me to one more thing that I think we can tweak about this. We're currently overriding everything on button, but we also still want to have ways that we can group buttons together. Maybe I want all the buttons on my nav to be slightly different, maybe different padding or something like that. But some of them have the theme button primary, some of them don't. And we end up kind of, kind of like this, where we've got our, our two different styles of buttons, but I need to get both of them and change the padding. So how am I going to do that? Because if I just do it on the theme, then that's going to look weird. I used to think this was redundant until I just barely built one of my sites and I, I tried this out to, to get rid of the button class by default and it didn't work for me, especially when I got into the nap. So, <laughs> and technically we don't really even need that button override anymore because that button already has this class. And that means that we, we no longer have to distinguish whether or not it's an anchor tag button versus a button button. We totally can add in some other enhancements to our base button class. Like we can grab our hover and add that here too. We want to have a consistent transition across all of our buttons from uh, for the background colors and, and other things, whatever it is. So I'm just going to do a quick transition line right here. And so now if we go back in here and refresh, this hover is now a mu much smoother than before. And this one also has a button hover now. It goes to black. They all go to black. And that just makes things a little bit more grouped together. And that way, now we can do fancier things. Maybe the button is, is slightly different inside of a nav. So nav with a button inside of it. Doesn't matter if it's the primary button, doesn't matter if it's the secondary, but we want that padding to be a lot smaller. So like maybe it's 2.25 rem all the way around. So if I went in here and just added, changed this to a nav element, then we go back in here, refresh, and now they're all changed no matter whether it was the primary or the just the base gray button. It also doesn't matter if it's not even if it's not themed, if it's also the element is a button element or if it's a, an anchor tag. So it doesn't matter if it's an A or a button, it's going to be collected by this button class. And so that makes it really nice to be able to play with. I'm going to get rid of that and reset this. And now we're set so that we can just continue to add our, our themes. And the cool thing is now we've taken care of all of our linking slash buttons elements, and we still have preserved this ability to have special unique text in line inside of, of paragraph text or even outside, but just as treated as a text link. So this ends up being a pretty solid system and I'm really liking it so far. So that's kind of the component flow for buttons right now.